Hello friends, uh, in this video we'll be talking about uh, carbohydrate metabolism and most importantly the part of the carbohydrate metabolism which is carried out uh, in the presence of oxygen which is called also the aerobic uh, respiration process and it is uh, called the tri citric acid cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle or in uh, TCA cycle in, sh in short. Okay. So let us see this cytic acid cycle. Now the cytic acid cycle is the heart of all the metabolic pathways because the, in the cytic acid cycle what we are looking at we are all uh, circulating the different intermediates of uh, this glycolysis and Krebs cycle uh, of, in, uh, of carbohydrate metabolism. So these are all the intermediates of carbohydrate metabolism where we are just circularizing between themselves. So we are, whatever we are taking up we are providing it again back to the same position. That's why the citric acid cycle is a very very important and it placed in the heart of all metabolic processes. Okay, now the citric acid cycle is also called the Krebs cycle, uh, and this citric acid cycle allows acetyl CoA, which is uh, which is a substrate or the basic ingredient for the citric acid cycle, to be oxidized into two carbon dioxide molecules. So this is the basic part. It produces two carbon dioxide molecules, and it will also generate water. Because two carbon uh, um, carbons enter to two carbons uh, leave uh, in each. Uh, initiation of the cycle there is no net loss of the intermediates because two carbon dioxide or two carbons are engaged in this process from the acetyl CoA and two carbons are released via the process or during this TCA cycle as you can see in, in these cases in these two cases carbon dioxides are generated okay now we'll talk about each of the state steps differently. Now in the very first step, this is the combination of acetyl CoA and oxaloacetate, uh, which is driven by a large negative free energy uh, association with hydrolysis of the uh, thioester bond. Now the thioester bond that is placed between this acetyl CoA is broken, and and that's why the energy uh, produces by the via the breakage uh, breakage broca of or uh, breakage of this uh, thioester bond, it produces a lot of energy, and this energy is helping uh, to carry out this reaction pretty fairly. Now it produces the citrate. Now the enzyme which uh, helps to uh, incorporate these two, uh, these two intermediate like acetyl CoA and oxaloacetate to produce citrate is called citrate synthase. Now another important point about this reaction is that large free energy change, a large free energy negative, which drives this reaction forward because of the breakage of uh, this thioester bond. So that is really important. Now you can see here in the detailed view that this is the acetyl CoA and this is the thioester bond and this is uh, the oxaloacetate which is a four carbon molecule. Now this thioester bond is broken and as a result of the breakage of this thioester bond as a coenzyme is produced and oxaloacetate is combined with this two carbon molecule of uh, this acetyl CoA and it will produce citrate. Okay, as you can see here, this is the citrate and it, it needs the hydrolysis of the bond that's why you need the presence of water for this reaction. Now the second step is, uh, although the intermediate cis aconitate uh, will preferentially return to the citrate, it is driven forward by low concentration of the product. Now uh, what that does it mean? Actually the second step is the conversion of citrate into isocitrate. Now this is just simply isomerization, but for this kind of isomerization, it produces an intermediate which is totally different than citrate and I uh, isocitrate. Now you can see this is the citrate, water molecule leaves the place and it produces the cis aconitase. So Aconitase, which is having uh, the cis orientation of this carbon uh, CO groups, and this cis aconitase is again uh, converted into another form of uh, citrate, which is called the isocitrate, by leaving water out of this cis aconitase. Okay, now uh, for uh, hap for for the happening of this reaction, what we need to do, we need to remove uh, the products. Now there is two different way to make this reaction forward. Whatever the reaction, if the reaction is uh, having a del G positive value, then we can make this reaction happen to the forward direction by doing two different things. One is to pull, another one is to push. Now we can push the thing by increasing the amount of substrate, increasing the concentration of substrate, and in second case uh, we can also. Uh, pull the reaction by just dragging our uh, whatever we are having uh, dragging uh, the the components or the products so in this case the product is uh, this so here it is uh, this this reaction is driven by the removal of product or quick removal of product okay now the enzyme contains a non heme uh, iron sulfur cluster as you can see here this is the iron sulfur cluster but we cannot say it's a heme so it's a non heme cluster now the enzyme which is responsible for doing this is called the aconitase enzyme 
and the key point about this step is the movement of the hydroxyl group to C2 eventually allows uh, for two keto acid carboxylations. Okay, enzymes contain a non-heme iron sulfur cluster, uh, and and that is really important. And this is the rare instance when a non-heme center. So the so center must contain a heme in most of the time when we are talking about the iron sulfur clusters. But in this case, this is arranged in in this uh, uh, cubic form without being uh, without placing any heme in 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 the central region of this construction. That's another important part, uh, or that's another unique thing or unique feature about the enzyme. Uh, uh, enzyme citrase, uh, aconitase, sorry. Okay. Now, uh, the third step of uh, uh, citric acid cycle is uh, the conversion of isocytate into alpha -keto ketoglutarate. And this is a reaction where a first carbon dioxide is generated because whatever we are looking at here, it is there is a CO group here at the third carbon position. This CO is leaves the place as CO2 and it reduces NAD plus into NADH. Okay, so the NAD, uh, the NAD form is physiologically important. It is found only in mitochondria and requires allosteric activation by ADP. Okay, so this is a key point about this reaction. So if ADP is present, it will activate this reaction. Uh, but if ATP is present, it will block this kind of reactions. And the enzyme which are responsible for making this reaction happen is called isocytate dehydrogenase. Now we know the enzyme dehydrogenase. What are they doing? They are involving in this oxidation reduction steps. Now it is it is uh, the reduction of NAD plus and uh, and the carbon dioxide is released. Okay, now keto uh, alpha ketoglutarate is produced from the isocyte in this step, and now the f this is the step uh, second. Uh, it is the fourth step, I believe. The, this is the fourth step, and this fourth step, uh, the production of succinyl CoA is formed uh, from alpha ketoglutarate. Again, in this step, this is the second step which will generate the carbon dioxide, and this is also the dehydrogenase reactions. And the enzyme which is responsible is called the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, as it is acting on the substrate alpha ketoglutarate. Now you can see here. In detailed manner, that this is the alpha ketoglutarate and this is the coenzyme A. Uh, so, it is the acetyl CoA actually. Uh, so it will interact with the here. This is not this is not acetyl CoA. This is the coenzyme. Sorry. Now it needs uh, the cofactor uh, coenzyme A. So coenzyme A in this case of, of on the reaction of alpha ketoglutide dehydrogenase is acting as a cofactor, which is facilitating uh, this reaction and help uh, to attach this as uh, this in coenzyme or acetyl acyl group COA group to this uh, CO region of this alpha ketoglutarate and converting it into succinyl CoA because this is the attachment of CoA to the uh, alpha ketoglutarate. Now the enzyme complex responsible for this uh, oxidative decarboxylation is similar to the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. However, E1 and E2 are different and the enzyme is not covalently inactivated like we have seen in case of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Remember, in case of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, we have seen three different uh, enzyme subunits which are uh, working side by side to achieve a particular goal. Now in this case too, we are having E1 and E2, but they are different than PDH complexes. But here still, it is generating carbon dioxide, just like this PDH complexes, which is decarboxylating agent. So it will produce carbon dioxide, it is uh, reducing NAD into NADH, and it is also attaching acetyl CoA or the COA to the uh, first carbon position. Okay, but it is varying uh, in, in the enzymatic structure. This follows the fact that this step is not an important control point of all okay because it is not an important important control point because it is varying in all these cases okay the key point is that the several cofactors in the complex are very very important uh, the cofactors are thymine pyrophosphate or uh, tp uh, tpp or thymine pyrophosphate is really important in this case lipoic acid is uh, another important part in this case and also as uh, the fad nad in is technically a substrate for this kind of reactions although it is occasionally cited as the cofactors uh, uh, this NAD or FAD whatever these are the substrate uh, most of the time but sometimes it is also called the cofactor for this kind of reactions okay now the fifth step of uh, this state th this reaction is uh, <coughs> the production of succinate from succinyl CoA. Now succinyl CoA is converted to succinate in the step of the pro that produces one GTP. Now GTP is often used in uh, it is often used in interchangeably with ATP when reporting products since they can be interconverted with each other. But still 
this is the production of GTP, not the ATP in this case. So we are having this succinyl CoA, which is having this CoA attached to the first carbon position of this glutarate to produce the succinyl CoA, and uh, it will track phosphate, uh, it will track phosphate and GDP and produce GTP and as a result what it does, it just cleave out this coenzyme A from that place and it will produce the succinate uh, intermediate. Okay. So if we look at here, the, the, the enzyme responsible for this kind of step is called the succinate thiokinase or succinyl CoA synthate, synthase. Okay. Uh, so as the name says, this is a kind of weird name because succinyl CoA is already synthesized and now it is breaking into succinate but still the enzyme name is succinyl CoA synthase because m many times all of these reactions are, uh, most of, in fact most of the reactions are uh, as you can see bidirectional reactions but this is not a bidirectional reaction, uh, this is a monodirectional reaction. Now the key point is that the GTP can rapidly or readily transfer a phosphate to ADP as can ATP to GT GDP utilizing the enzyme nucleotide diphosphokinase. Now this enzyme nucleotide diphosphokinase is really important because it helps then in the interconversion between the GTP and ATP which is really necessary. Because if we are having GTP we cannot take, take this GTP in our uh, reactions, we cannot take this GTP to the next level of uh, electron transport chain to produce energy but we must need ATP. So we need to produce ATP from GTP which is found in the cell. So now let's look at the enzyme. The nucleotide uh, nucleoside diphosphate kinase irreversibly transfers a high energy phosphate from a nucleotide triphosphate to a nucleotide diphosphate. It has, uh, it has a broad substrate specificity and works for various nucleotide sequences. Now as we can see in all these cases, uh, that nucleoside uh, monophosphate kinase accomplishes a similar task. It transfers two high energy phosphates from a nucleo nucleoside triphosphate to a nucleoside monophosphate. Now if we look at these pictures, we can demonstrate this GTP and GTP come and th there is a switch or shuffling of phosphate group. Now here, uh, the TTP becomes TDP and ADP becomes ATP. And the same manner, if we look, this GTP becomes GTP and ADP becomes ATP because just between the shifting of phosphate groups between each other and it is at achieved by the presence of this nucleoside diphosphate. Sometimes nucleoside diphosphate works on to transfer the phosphate group from diphosphates and there is nucleotide monophosphate kinase which is also uh, the transferring agent of phosphate from uh, from a diphosphate or from a triphosphate uh, to a monophosphate. Okay. For example, now GTP produced in the citric acid cycle is sometimes uh, uh, totaled uh, to the pro products as ATP bec because of their readily interconversion. So whatever GTP is produced, it can be converted into ATP and this ATP which is really important during the electron transport chain to yield energy. Okay, so this is all about that nucleoside diphosphate kinase. Okay, I have uh, to talked before as nucleotide but this is not nucleotide, this is nucleoside diphosphate kinase anyways. Now move on to another, the, the further step, in, in this step uh, uh, the succinate is converted into another intermediate which is called fumarate and in this case this is also dehydrogenase reaction and the, the cofactor for this is FAD. Now FAD is reduced to FADH2 and uh, the succinate is converted into this, this enzyme complex which is fumarate. Now fumarate is having a trans orientation uh, like this. Now the enzyme is, is responsible is called the succinate dehydrogenase or succinic dehydrogenase. All the enzymes of the cy citric acid cycle are in the mitochondrial matrix except succinate dehydrogenase. Now the succinate dehydrogenase enzyme is bound to the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this is a very very unique feature about this enzyme. And I must tell you another important thing that this enzyme is also responsible in uh, the fatty acid metabolism process uh, and uh, that's why I I we, can, we can see the importance of placing the succinate dehydrogenase or succinate dehydrogenase enzyme at the inter inner mitochondrial membrane. What is the importance? We will see later. But uh, the presence is really really significant in this case. Okay. Now uh, the further step is to convert fumarate into uh, further step is to convert this fumarate into malate and this step is also a reversible process. Now we are having the fumarate which is having the trans orientation and water uh, is come and water will break this double bond between the carbons and it will produce a linear stretch of four carbon molecule which is a malate or a malic acid. Okay, So this is a very very simple hydration reaction water comes and break this bond and then we produce this 4 carbon. So we, it is previously 4 carbon, fumarate is also 4 carbon but just uh, utilizing water hydrolysis can take place, uh, hydrolysis of the bond, uh, double bond takes place and it will produces this linear form of malate. 
okay now right after that what we are having we are having the for the final uh, step of converting malate into oxaloacetate because oxaloacetate and acetyl coa is a very first intermediate to produce a citrate which is the basic uh, starting point of uh, the citric acid cycle now the malate is here which is a linear molecule is also is again converted into oxaloacetate which is also four carbon molecule but in this reaction also they need a reducing agent and the agent in this case is nad plus they reduces this nad plus into nadh and the enzymes in involved in this reaction is called the malic dehydrogenase now the enzyme convert this uh, malate into oxaloacetate pro and producing NADH now the NADH in this case which is produced is can be further taken up uh, for for the electron transport chain to generate energy okay so that is the actual goal now the cytoplasmic form of malic dehydrogenase allows the malate as part of shuttle to functionally transport NADH across the mitochondrial membrane otherwise NADH cannot transfer uh, from one place to from from one membrane site to another site okay so the shuttles are really important uh, so so the cytoplasmic form of malic acid is also malic acid dehydrogenase is present and there's another form which is present in the matrix of the mitochondria okay now this is the cytoplasmic form of malate dehydrogenase which allows the malate aspartate to to the shuttle uh, from a, from one place to another place from from the mitochondria towards the cytosol and again from the cytosol into the mitochondria okay now the key point about this reaction is that this reaction would proceed uh, uh, backward in if acetyl coa didn't feed into the citric acid keep it moving forward now what will happen if there is a less amount of acetyl coa if if there is no production of acetyl coa so as a result what happens this reaction will proceed backward and why this reaction will proceed backward because it will uh, start to allow uh, the run of this cycle and keep this cycle moving forward that's why they they start to go so it will b going back and produce malate then again the oxaloacid and then malate so it, it will go backward to keep this reaction running if there is no acetyl coa present so the presence of acetyl coa is important and controlling this part of the reaction step okay Okay. Now, if we look at the energy tracking, to track energy production inside the cell, we keep in mind that which pathway steps occurs in which parts of the cell and show the substrates are transported. That's the very important part. So, this is the two things. I, uh, one thing is that, the very first thing is that, that we need to keep on mind that which pathway is taking place in which part of the cell. And second thing is that, uh, how substrates are transported. Now, here, remember which pathway steps produce substrates level ATP as well as which steps creates reduced electron carriers because the substrate level ATP is a source of energy as well as the reduced electron carriers like NADH, FADH2 and all this they are also electron carriers they are also energetic molecules and they can uh, have the potential to produce energy now here what we can see we can see the different steps of glycolysis as well as Krebs cycle where ATP and electron carrying molecules are generated okay now if we choose the pathway of glucose to acetyl coa and finally produce carbon dioxide through the uh, through the Krebs cycle what we can find we start the, the our destination we have seen that it produces uh, it produces glycolysis after glycolysis 2 NADH no net ATP then uh, then the citric acid cycle 5 NADH and, and if we go another round so uh, in in the very first round of uh, this glycolysis we generate 2 ATP and uh, in in uh, and and in the citric acid cycle we generate no ATP but 2 GTP but in NADH uh, it will generate 5 and uh, 5 NADH and 1 FADH2 so at the at the end of the glycolysis and citric acid cycle we have generated 2 ATP 2 GTP 10 NADH and 2 FADH2 and all of this FADH2 are generated during the citric acid cycle uh, NADH are generated in both the cycles a uh, citric acid cycle as well as the glycolysis GTP is only generated during the cy citric acid cycle but ATP is generated during Glyce gly glycolysis okay so these are the very very important step you can memorize you can remember now uh, now let us go back and look at another type of uh, energy tracking now in this type of energy tracking we will be see the energy of glucose to lactate now here uh, two state of the glucose because uh, th this is the two molecule of glycerol dehyd uh, 3 phosphate which has been produced so it produces only two ATP no NADH no FADH2 no GTP and nothing else it produces only two ATP now we can know that uh, if we go through the process of the fermentation we can generate a very fewer amount of energy but if we go through the aerobic respiration 
filtration scheme with the presence of oxygen throughout the citric acid cycle we can generate many higher amount of energy because in those cases we produce 2 ATPs, 2 GTPs, 10 NADH and 2 FADH2 okay so this is that's why the aerobic respiration scheme is always important over this fermentation scheme now uh, you can see here at the very beginning step the ketone bodies and fatty acids and pyruvates and amino acids can can be broken down into acetyl CoA and it can be feed into the citric acid cycle now these are the different feeder pathways of the citric acid cycle now the feeder pathways are important because whenever we are talking about metabolic processes we are talking about the linkage of different types of metabolism because we are eating all these things we are eating proteins we are eating fats we are eating carbohydrates all of these things must be broken down into simple parts and all those things can be converted in into some of the very common biochemical pathways otherwise for uh, if there there are a hundred and thousand different types of biochemical pathways for each single reaction uh, mo there will be much more complexity and cell cannot afford that for that purpose cell ha cell is dividing some major uh, metabolic pathways and will take up uh, the products from other breakdown uh, other breakdown reactions and will take them and incorporate them into the same pathways and it will produce energy like in this case ketone bodies fatty acids pyruvate and amino acid can be converted into acetyl CoA and it can be fed on to the reaction and the second uh, this is how we can feed uh, on to this TCA cycle reaction and also the feeding process is that amino acid degradation can also generate succinyl CoA and also uh, the odd or branch chain fatty acid oxidation can also lead to the formation of succinyl CoA so this is the second round of uh, getting into the citric acid cycle and the third round of getting into the cycle is the purine biosynthesis and the urea cycle now the urea cycle produces the fumarate as well as the purine bio biosynthesis pathway produces fumarate and also phenylalanine and tyrosine amino acid degradation can lead up to the production of fumarate now when they produce this fumarate they, they can convert into this uh, citric acid cycle and the whole citric acid cycle will be carried out as it was okay so these are the feeding pathways and what are the synthetic part pathways from this uh, TCA cycle one is the gluconeogenesis now if it produces oxaloacetate as we know the oxaloacetate is a very important intermediate of uh, the uh, intermediate of uh, gluconeogenesis so it, it will interact uh, with the other enzymatic pro en enzymes and will produce gluco uh, produce uh, glucose uh, from this oxaloacetate okay and it can also produces heme uh, or, or, or heme model for for our uh, blood or body utilization or ketone body utilization purpose and it can also produce heme which is very important com components for our blood transport or oxygen transport system of our blood which is called hemoglobin now the succinyl CoA is very important intermediate for production of these hemes and also for the utilization of ketone body inside our cell so this is a huge role so you can see the citric acid cycle is playing a very very big role inside our body if we shut down the citric acid cycle all of these shuttles and all of these steps of catabolism and, 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 and uh, anabolism link up will be broken down so that's why you call uh, this citric acid cycle is at the heart of all that type of biochemical pathways because this cycle is keeping all those different cycles running on and on and on all the time okay so that's it and I hope it will help you. Thank you.